Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage the chairman, WTTC and founder and executive chairman, Abercrombie and Kent, Jeffrey Kent, and the chairman, Turner Enterprises, Ted Turner. Ted, where are you going? Well, good morning, everybody. I must say, it gives me great pleasure to sit here with uh, Ted, who's an old friend. And um, the last time we were together for a period of time, I think we were bumping around in a Land Rover in the middle of the Okavango swamps in Botswana. And we had like four days together, and we discussed the world in general with this wonderful audience of wild animals, which we've now replaced with you guys and girls today. <laughs> and and um, what, a, what is amazing about Ted, I, I'm sure all of you, he's iconic, he's a legend in his own time, you've all read about him, but actually when you're with him for four days in a row, you want more and more time with him because he is so interesting on such a huge variety of subjects. And to think that I've only got like 25 minutes to talk to Ted on so many things, um, so I'll get going. My first question always, uh, which always amazed me, that Ted, in 1997, you woke up one day and you decided to give, what, $1 billion to the UN. Tell us about it. Well, uh, I had been uh, given an award uh, by the United Nations Association in the United States for my support for the United Nations over a long period of time. And uh, I, I usually wait till the last minute to decide what I'm gonna, gonna say. And I, had to make a, a short uh, acceptance remarks in, in New York. And I said, what am I going to say? And the United Nations was in a lot of trouble because the United States had chosen not to pay their dues for the past two years. So they were two years in arrears, and it was about a, a billion dollars. I said, well, if I, if I said I'll, I'll make a large donation to the United Nations, uh, you know, that, that would uh, probably be a nice thing to do. And I thought, well, that's okay. How much? And I said, well, how about uh, $100 million? And I said, hmm, how about a billion dollars? <laughs> and uh, so I, I decided that that's what I would do. What, are your, what did your accountant say when you told him that? They said, we can't get that ready in two days. I said, because I'm going to announce it on Friday. I said, well, did you better work late. And, uh, and, then, and then they checked, and an hour later, they called me back and said, ha, you said, you can't give money to the United Nations. They can only take, they can't take money from individuals or foundations or, or from uh, NGOs. They can only take money from sovereign states. So I said, well, thank God. God didn't want me to give my money away. <laughs> but then I didn't feel so good. I started thinking, and I thought, well, I'll create a parallel foundation and, uh, and, and, and I'll give that the billion dollars and, and, and dedicate that money to be used for UN causes uh, like refugees and health care and things like that. So I checked with my attorneys and they said that'll work after a couple hours of studying it. So that's what, that's what we did. And that's how we created the UN Foundation. I came up with the idea for the name I could have named it Ted Turner's UN Foundation, but I didn't think that would be appropriate. And uh, so, so we, I asked, I came up with the idea of we call it the UN Foundation. That would be the best thing. And Kofi Annan uh, let us use the UN's name, which is, I don't think they'd ever done before or since. You've had, you've had so many lives. You know, you, you've owned uh, the Atlanta Braves. You've um, founded CNN. Um, you've been a world champion sailor, and now you've really been an environment, environmentalist. So what did you think of all of those things? What did you enjoy the most? My marriage night. <laughs> well, you asked me, what did I enjoy the most? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wasn't that the best night you ever had? That, that, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I said, I'd have gotten married sooner if I'd have known it was this good. <laughs> That, that's your answer. Ted, tell me about your ranches. You own about two million, two million acres. I think you're one of the largest private landowners in the world. And earlier we were discussing the, the bison. 
And I think in Africa, we were looking at the problems of the environment. And I think you told me that there was something like 20 million bison before the uh, white man came to the United States. And, and they went down to like just 200. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about that. Well, we just, we slaughtered them. Uh, their, their hides, the Industrial Revolution was just starting. And uh, their hides were worth like a dollar, which was a lot of money 200 years ago. And so they, they killed them for their hides. They just left the meat to rot out on the uh, Great Plains where they killed them because they didn't have refrigeration then and they had no way to uh, get the meat to market before it spoiled. So they just killed them all. And, and it wasn't just white men. It was the Indians were getting paid to kill them too. So they joined in. And so when you bought your, your ranches, um, how many bison, you're, one, you're the largest well, started, bison owner today? Yeah, oh, well, by far. I've got far. over <laughs> twice as many as the U.S. government. We got so how many bison did you start with? I started with three, a bull and two cows. And, and in the spring, the two cows had calves. And that's why I went from three to five, you know, an 80% increase. <laughs> and I said, this is, this is easy. It's like a business, right? <laughs> Nothing to it. And how, how many bison do you own today? 55,000. 55,000. You see, that, that's a conservation story. Three to 55,000, one man. That's incredible. Yeah, but the bison did a lot of the work. They did a lot of work. And that's yeah, what you, I bought the land You supervised the work. I bought the land as the bison herd increased. I wanted to keep them and keep increasing them. But I needed more land, so I just bought the land and then put another bison herd on it. And then the next year, I had to have another big ranch to put more bison because the bison, they, they, they increase exponentially. It's easy to see how we went in 70 years from 2 billion people to 7 billion people because in 30 years, I went from three bison to 55,000. <laughs> Tell us about the world. You know, we, we hear, you know, I know one of the things, subjects we discussed in Botswana was how many people were in the world when it started, how many people there were when you were born, how many people there are today, the fact that if we have global warming, the temperature goes up by, say, four degrees, what's that going to do? Tell us a, a little bit about the world well, and the population. Lot, we're, we're, I, I think uh, that we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, we're, we're, we're working here and in many of our other organizations to achieve sustainability. But we need to do that with ourselves. We, we need to, uh, to limit our numbers voluntarily uh, because, you know, we, we can't just keep adding another billion people to the world's population every 10 or 15 years. Uh, we already have, with 7 billion people, we have a billion people every day going to bed hungry at night. And, uh, it's very unlikely that, that at this point that we're going to be able to increase our agricultural yields. In fact, with global climate change uh, and all the other problems that we have with soil erosion and uh, water de aquifer depletion from over, uh, over pumping for irrigation, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're headed for catastrophe. Uh, the, the price of wheat has doubled in the last year. It's an article in the to today's paper, headlines on the front page that uh, particularly in the Middle East, it's a real problem because they don't really have enough uh, good farmland and enough water in the Middle East to raise their own food. Now they're having to depend to get their wheat from other countries and very few countries have extra wheat to sell. And so the prices are, prices are going up, food, food prices are going up. And, and we're, we're, you know, intermediate term, we're facing uh, real serious problems, mainly because of the overuse of the environment. So what are, you, what are your feelings about fossil fuels, about alternative energy? I think I know them, but it'd be good to oh, tell yeah. the audience. I, I, think, I think we need to, uh, we need to completely uh, phase out of our fossil fuel uh, energy system and, and move over to clean renewables as quickly as we possibly can for a whole lot of reasons. Our financial security, because we're putting all this money uh, overseas to pay for, pay for oil, and uh, coal is dangerous. Every week we lose 20 or 30 coal miners somewhere in the world. The coal mine's collapsing. Uh, and, and we're going to run out of those fossil fuels, too. So we need to, and, and the sooner we get off of them 
And we have the new technologies with wind, solar, geothermal, and, and a whole lot of other good ideas with a little more, little more R&D we can uh, develop even, even better. But they work, they work fine right now. And uh, uh, that's, what we, that's one of the most important things we need to do. The most important thing we need to do, though, is get rid of nuclear weapons before they get rid of us. They're, they're sitting there. And uh, yeah, last year, the Security Council voted unanimously to get rid of them, but they don't implement. But they did, did vote United States, Russia, China, and, and all 15 members, Brazil, uh, permanent and the temporary members uh, voted unanimously. So everybody knows that we should get rid of them, but we need to just say, let's do it. This is one of your, your big, big sort of crusades that you're on now. Yeah. You got a crusade for something. I've already saved the bison, so we have to move on to other things. <laughs> now it's save the humans. <laughs> but the, the, and the bison's just going big. I happy. had bumper stickers years ago made up that save the humans. But about the same time they had those bumper stickers that save the whales, remember that? And then at the Citadel at college where, where they were going to let the women go to school, they said save the males. So they had a bumper sticker. So anyway, say, well, gee, why, why do the humans need saving? There's lots of them. That's exactly right. That's the problem. Tell us about your, your views on ecotourism. I know you have a lot of ranches in Argentina, New Mexico, Montana, and you just opened a new ranch for Mejo in uh, northern Mexico, I believe, and starting ecotourism. What, do you think that's a, a big future? Ecotourism? Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love tourism. I'm a, I'm a tourista. That's Spanish for tourists. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know you know. <laughs> I speak Swahili. I, like I, I speak Swahili, but I even, love, even I, I get that. I love traveling. <laughs> that, that, Tell us about a, your travels. I got I, Well, I, I, it just happened. I wanted to go to, to Antarctica, and I, it was going to all six of the other continents on business uh, back about 15 years ago in, in one year. And I... And so I said, well, I'll just, this will be the year I'll just charter a plane and fly down to Antarctica and spend the day down there and then come back. At least I'll have been there. And uh, so I did it. And then, then I found out, has anybody here ever been to all seven continents in one year? I think I'm the only person in the world. That's in one year? In, in the same year. Same year. I actually did it in 11 months. See, there's not one person. No, this I'm is the busy. tourism council. <laughs> This is the, these we're the, are all the hey, head we're, we're, we're the experts on tourism. You can do it. It costs a lot, but you can do it. <laughs> it helps to have your own plane. <laughs> let's, do, let's do another thing. We're, we were talking earlier about, again, going back to wildlife and humans, and our, our most nearest relative is probably the bonobo ape, and uh, they have, I think, 98.6% of our DNA. And what, chimps do too. And chimps. So what, what's your interest in the great apes? Well, I think that if we could, I, 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 I can't really take on too many more causes. I'm 72 years old. But uh, I'm, 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 I'm doing the research right now to see whether or not I want to uh, dedicate some of my time to an effort to saving, saving the great apes. I've already given a substantial amount of money to do it. Uh, but I think the, the, the reason why to do it is, is because maybe if we can learn to quit killing the apes. We're killing, this is the gorillas, the orangutans, the bonobos, and the chimpanzees. Those are the four, four great apes. And we're still killing them and eating them. You know, that's, it's, to me, it's like cannibalism because an ape can do just about anything a person can do except build nuclear weapons. So they're more intelligent than we are. Well, maybe being not so smart might be good. You know, you can be too smart for your own good. No, that's very true. And I think you're, I mean, I think uh, Ted's huge interest in our environment, in, uh, in, in wildlife species and the great apes is really extraordinary. If you but had, if we can quit killing, if we could quit killing the great apes, maybe we could stop killing each other. It'd be a very good start. Well, it'd be a step in the right direction. I mean, you know, we're talking about the gorilla fund, the gorilla. I, I'm sick of us killing each other. I, I do not like to see that. I, you know, most people don't want to do that either. Most, most people, how many people in the room want to help other people? You know, how many want to kill other people? How many people like the bombing? 
well, if we don't like the bombing, why do we keep dropping bombs on everybody? Mm. You know, I, I, I don't think we do any good by doing it. I, I don't know, are we, I don't know, would it have been better to capture bin Laden and put him on trial? It would have been more interesting. We did that with, uh, with uh, Os not Osama, the president of uh, Iraq. What was his Saddam. name? Saddam Hussein, yes. right. Saddam Hussein. Made good television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. This way we got nothing, not even pictures. <laughs> Very true. To tell you what good is it to kill somebody if you don't take pictures of it? <laughs> you know, let everybody know what it looks like. I didn't want to see Ted, it. Tell us, tell us about the changing subject again. <laughs> tell us about your sailing career and why you like to sail. I mean, it was a big part of your... Well, I, I what did you to, win and what did you well, do? Well, when I was a little boy, yeah. I wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to be a champion athlete. And I tried everything. And I, I was a little bit small. I was a little bit young. I was not really great coordinated. And I wasn't really fast. I was okay. But I said, I'm not going to make the Olympics in any of these deals. And when I got <laughs> to sailing, you, you don't have to have a whole lot of physical ability. Uh, you just have to train real hard, work hard. And I said, this is a sport I can be good at if I really dedicate my time to it. So that's how, how I did it. It wasn't just the love of the sea. In fact, it's wet and cold out there, particularly racing at night and uh, racing across oceans. I raced 50,000 miles at sea, including across the Atlantic twice, across the Pacific and from Australia to New Zealand. I raced all over the world. And, uh, uh, and, and, I, and I enjoyed it, but it was really nice to give it up and be able to spend the night at home in bed. <laughs> that, was, that was the good part about sailing, a right? bed is a lot better than a racing sailboat at sea. Uh, well, I think I would like to uh, thank Ted for uh, being with us today. Um, he's really, as you can see, he's done so many things that all of us would take at least 10 lives to even accomplish one of the things he's done. But um, on behalf of us all, Thank you very much for being here today with us, Ted. My pleasure to be here. And good luck with the bison, good luck with the bonobos, and let's hope we all stop killing each other. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks.